Hey guys, I am here with Puck, the Powder Puff Chinese Crested, and we are going to get him groomed, so let's get busy. We're starting off with the bath. We're putting the groomer's harness on him. This is the small tub combo. It keeps him in place nicely. I am frothing the shampoo and conditioner. This improves the consistency and makes it spread all over the dog nice and evenly. I think he likes the way it smells. It's a good boy. And we're wetting him down with lukewarm water. And now we're spreading on the shampoo. We're going to let the shampoo sit on for three to five minutes and really do its job. I'm using eye groom squalling hair on him. For the face, I'm using easy groom crystal white to help lighten the tear stains. It doesn't work in one sitting, but if you use it every week, it really makes a difference. It's important to rinse the dog thoroughly, get all the shampoo residue out of the coat so that the dog is not itchy and so that there's nothing left in the coat to attract dirt. And with the conditioner, we will let the conditioner sit on for three to five minutes as well. This is eye grum squalling care conditioner. While the conditioner is soaking in the coat, I'm going to redo the face again with the crystal white shampoo. I'm using it full strength. As I rinse the dog, I unhook the harness so that we could get under the harness really good. I use a good quality ear wash to dry out any moisture that might have gotten into the ears, loosen up wax and debris and allow the dog to shake his head to get the fluid out of his ears. Here I am using the balm and this is a leave-on conditioner. It will make the coat really silky. Going to wrap him up in a nice warm towel and head to the drying table. As I blow dry the coat, I am using a variable temperature stand dryer and a Madden pin brush. The pin brush glides through the coat without any breakage. I brush in long, even strokes straightening the hair, brushing it in the direction that I want the hair to grow. Not flicking my wrist or snapping my wrist at all, which would cause breakage. Here I'm using the Pinello comb. This is a really good plastic comb. It gets all the way down to the skin. It's really good because the firmness and the design of the teeth just brush right down to the skin. It's great for blow drying top knots, getting around the eyes, mustaches and beards if the dog has one. It's really good to train your dog to lay upside down when you're blow drying. This allows you the ability to get the underside and up in the armpits brushed out really good. It's important to do a thorough comb through after the blow dry. I am misting on some anti-static spray to relax the hair, set in the part, and just get the hair laying down in the direction it needs to go and making sure it's completely tangle free. Now we're going to start the clipper work on the face. I'm using a 15 blade against the grain. We're coming down in a V shape I take it down about the same length down as the muzzle is long, keeping a nice even appearance. I don't like to go too far down. I think the testing it out with the length of the muzzle gives you a perfect balance on how far down to trim the neck. 
It's important to hold the skin taut as you are clipping. You can see his eye is stretched back, his lip is stretched back, and that keeps everything nice and tight. Cleaning out around the tear stains really good with a 40 blade and going back over the muzzle with a 40 blade to give it a really tight, clean appearance. So I used a 15 on the cheeks and the throat against the grain. Now I'm using a 40 blade and tightening everything up. Here you can see his face is all done, nice and clean. I trimmed it to about a half an inch behind the eyes is where I set the line. Trimming the ears, you want to pay attention to how my fingers are supporting the ear. I slide my finger up behind the blade as I am clipping and keep the ear firm between my thumb and my forefinger. Always going center up, center out, center out on the ear. So here you see me bracing the ear and sliding my finger up as the blade goes up the ear, always keeping it supported. Now here you have this little flap of skin. It's really easy to cut. You want to be sure you have the full width of the blade going over that area. To get this little area between the skull and the ear, I have flipped the ear backwards and used my fingers to push that little area up and out so that I can clip it easily. On the back side of the ear, here again, you have that flap of skin. I'm using the full width of the blade over that flap of skin area so that the corner of the blade does not nick that area. That is probably the most common area that people nick the ears. As I edge out the ears with the scissors, I'm holding the ear firmly between my finger and my thumb. I'm resting the blade of the scissor on my fingers and going up the ear with my thumb and my forefinger sliding it upwards as I trim upwards always keeping the ear firm and always bracing the blade of the scissor on my finger Here I am blending the back of the ears into the longer hair, just pick, 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 just coming up the very center of the ear. I do not pluck ears, so I am trimming the hair out of the inside of the ears as opposed to plucking. Pulling it up and out and then snipping it off. Now on the back of the ear, I'm using my blending shears and I am blending the clipped line into the longer hair. And now they look nice and neat and pretty. As we start on the feet, we're going to clipper the pads of the feet with a 40 blade. We're holding the hair on the back of the foot up and out of the way so we don't accidentally clip that with the clippers. I try to get everything off the bottom of the foot and edge out around the foot a little bit. Being very careful not to cut the hair that will come down off the side of the foot. One wrong move with the clipper and you can really mess it up. When I'm trimming around the feet, I use my blending shears. And you can see I flip my shears back and forth, forwards and backwards. This is very, very important, so pay attention to how I use my blending shears around the feet. As I'm edging out around the feet here, I've got my shears resting on the table and I kind of have them almost flat down on the table. 
That way I don't cut off too much hair. Here I am using my shears backwards to create the hawk and giving it some angle there. Again, as I'm trimming around the front feet, I'm keeping my shears resting on the table, rounding out the foot. I want to go somewhat straight across on the front and keeping it full out on the sides. Again, here I am using my shears backwards, creating that hawk angle. Combing the bulk of the hair upwards and a little bit down so that I can just get the very back of the foot and not too much off of the hawk. Combing, combing, and recombing is very important. The combing is as important as the trimming is. So I'm just checking it over and over again, being sure that I have my angles just right with these shears backwards. If you use the shears the other way, you're going to cut off too much hair on the hawk. So here you can see the feet still look natural. The hawk looks nicely angled up giving them nice angles in the rear. I'm not trying to create an unnatural look. It's very important to have a natural look to this dog. Here you can see how nice those hawks are setting up. You can see his angles. When he moves, you're going to be able to see his feet kick up and see the pads. Now we're moving on to the back end. We want to trim around the anus nice and tight. I prefer to do this with scissors on a dog that it's important to keep all the right coat in all the right places. If you use a clipper, you can just take out a little too much hair and I don't want to do that. So I'm very cautious and judicious with what I trim. So here you can see he's got too much hair poking off the back end. And he does have a thicker cottonier coat, so I really want to lay this coat down. I am using the Andis de-shedding rake, and this is a newer Andis rake, so it the blades on it are quite sharp. So rather than pulling hair, it's actually cutting hair and keeping a really natural look. And I'm just thinning this on down, keeping it so it doesn't look like it's been trimmed or cut at all, is my purpose. I recheck with the comb, see how it's laying, and see if I need to take out a little more hair. And the Chinese Crested is a double-coated dog. It has an undercoat and guard hairs, uh, but the undercoat grows as long as the guard hairs. So using something that's going to pull out a little bit of that undercoat does not hurt. True thinning shears have teeth on both sides of the shear. This eliminates any lines or cutting out too much hair. It keeps a very natural look. So I'm judiciously going in one or two snips at a time, trying to create a little bit of a shelf, trying to set his tail up on high, and keeping his back end from hiding his quality. The, the hair, when it's too pushed up, hides where the tail's actually sitting, makes the dog look longer bodied than he is, and you cannot see his angles properly. So you want to see his shelf, you want to see the tail up high, you want to see, you know, the angulation on the back of the leg. You don't want too much coat hiding the beauty of the dog. One or two snips at a time, comb it out, see where it is. So now we're moving on to flat ironing. I missed the coat with Igram Squalling Care Spray to protect the coat. I start the flat iron about an inch off of the skin and just come down. I'm using a mini flat iron. It's a really small one. It's really nice for these toy breeds. Very easy to control. A 
I'm just going over the whole dog, straightening out his hair, laying it down nice. He's such a good boy. It's always good to have somebody hold the dog's head while you're doing this. It's not a good idea to flat iron a dog without somebody holding their head. So now we're moving on to the top knot. I either hand pluck out the hair right over the eyes or I can use my little de-shedding rake and pick it out. This will shorten it up just a bit with a really natural look. Comb it, see where it's at. See if I need to take out just a little bit more. I find that too much hair up there actually takes away from the beauty of the dog. So picking out a little bit of this hair is a good thing. It's looking just about right. Now we're going to flat iron the top knot as well. Missed it with the eye groom squalling care. Pull the hair up between the ears. Being very careful not to let the flat iron touch the ears. Just coming straight up the middle away from the ears. With his head being firmly held. Oh, it's a good boy. You are so welcome, buddy. All right. Well, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a single upload. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.